How come Rick had a totally different love interest in the comics? Why was Daryl Dixon created for the TV show? And how drastically different was Carl's life off screen? Hi, I'm Dylan. Let's dive right in and avoid all the walkers. Andrea and Rick did what? It's been a long time since Andrea graced our screens. However, the comic book version of Andrea was actually Dale's girlfriend before eventually hooking up with Rick and becoming the comic's greatest couple. Over the course of her three seasons on the show, she had two notable relationships, one with Shane and the other with the governor. However, the comic book version of Andrea was actually Dale's girlfriend before eventually hooking up with Rick and becoming the comic's greatest couple. She even took care of Carl knowing that he'd killed her adoptive son, Ben. Unfortunately, this version of Andrea didn't survive until the end of the series either. While trying to save Alexandria, she was bitten on the neck by a walker, and a tearful Rick had to be the one to put her down for good. Interestingly, Andrea's original arc on the TV show was meant to follow largely the same storyline as the comics, with Lori Holden revealing she had signed on for eight years initially. However, a showrunner decided it was time to bring down the curtain on the character and write her off the series during season three. A decision, by the way, that Lori is still none too pleased about, but who could blame her? And speaking of another character that had a completely different fate, Rick needs a hand. Look, being stuck in a zombie apocalypse is no easy feat, and you'll need to sacrifice a lot to survive the walkers and some of the scummy humans too. In the case of Rick Grimes, he's had to give up different things in both the TV show and comic book series. Undoubtedly, one of the more painful experiences he suffered in the comics was losing his right hand. Well, he didn't really lose it per se, since it was the governor who brutally chopped it off as punishment. The event traumatized the right-handed Rick who couldn't even shoot his gun anymore. However, he eventually learned how to deal with losing a limb and also received a prosthetic later on helping him to recover from such a heinous act. This storyline oddly never played out on the TV show. Although it was briefly teased when Rick severely injured his hand on a machete and fans thought he was set to lose it. Heck, even Andrew Lincoln campaigned for it to happen, but admitted it would probably cost the effects department a lot of money to implement. But that's not the only surprising thing that differentiates the comic book Rick and the TV version, as you'll find out next. Carl is still standing. Much like Game of Thrones, The Walking Dead is brutal in all the victims it claims. One particular death that hit really hard and crushed us was Carl's, especially since he decided to put an end to it himself rather than see his dad or Michonne having to do it. Seriously, he survived how many close encounters before that? You just never thought the Grim Reaper would come for him. Plus, it was totally unexpected since the character had been a huge part of the comics. In fact, all the way to the end. Carl is actually the person who had to put his dad down after he was turned into one of the undead in the second to last issue. He was part of the last men standing and outlived numerous close friends and loved ones throughout the magical run. You kind of look at him and immediately hear Destiny Child Survivor because he's the perfect embodiment of those lyrics. The best part though is that Carl actually receives a happy ending in the finale. He marries a special someone and has a child. But that's an awesome detail we'll discuss a little later on, so stick around. Where is Daryl? It's safe to say that The Walking Dead is pretty much the Daryl Dixon show. Since day one, he's been the favorite and is one of the main reasons that most people have stuck around for so long. I mean, he's getting a spin-off in the near future, so that tells you all you need to know about his popularity among the fan base. But Daryl didn't actually appear in the comics at all. Like, nada. Funny enough, he also wasn't in the show's original plans either. As it turns out, Norman Reedus read the script for The Walking Dead and was obsessed with the story, wanting to be a part of it no matter what. His persistence paid off as he was eventually allowed to audition. Liking what he saw, the showrunner decided to cast Norman and create it apart just for him. And boom, like that, Daryl was born into existence. It's proof of two things though. One, persistence is key to success, and two, no one knows what'll be the next hit before it happens. So thank you, Norman, for refusing to give up and becoming one of the most iconic TV characters of the past decade. Seriously, do you think The Walking Dead would feel the same without Daryl? A completely different Carol. If you think of a badass heroine, Carol is the first person who comes to mind. She's basically become the Ripley of the show, slashing away at walkers and showing them who's the boss here. While the TV version of Carol took some time to find her inner courage, she's now the first person everyone wants on their team when going into battle. In the comics though, Carol was someone entirely different. She never stood out and remained codependent on those around her. 
In many ways, she was actually quite a sad character, never finding the same drive or fire as the TV version of Carol. In the end, even her demise was rather tragic, as she sought out a walker to help her end her constant suffering. It was seriously dark. Considering how the TV version of the character has received incredible praise from fans and critics alike, this was one change that was obviously for the better. Both adaptations of Carol started from a similar point, but one has learned how to take back the power while the other succumbed to her inner demons. It goes to show how different writers can change the direction of the same material. The question of Eugene's loyalty. Good news, Eugene has a mullet both in the comics and TV show. His business at the front and party at the back hairdo has become a trademark of the character, so it's great to see that he's still able to maintain such a fashion statement in the middle of the zombie apocalypse. However, when it comes to personality traits, well, the TV version of Eugene is a little more slippery and devious. You see, you can't really trust him as he's done some questionable things and turned his back on those who believed in him. In the Image comic series, Eugene is totally loyal to Rick. He wouldn't even dream of betraying him, as he keeps his word and promises to his friend. While there are elements of awkwardness to both versions of this character, there's only one of them that you can truly believe in when the chips are down. Granted, everyone has their faults and their bad days, but we'd much rather have the Eugene from the comics in our corner any day of the week, since he won't stab you in the back. But hey, at least they both had their mullets, right? Who does Michonne really love? Let's be honest here, Michonne and Rick's romance, affectionately known as Rishon, was pure genius on the writer's part. Those two completely deserved each other, and the chemistry was undeniable every time they were on screen together. Weirdly enough, in the comics, they never hooked up. She dated Mike, Tyrese, Morgan, and Ezekiel, but never Rick. Of course, as we've realized, the showrunners didn't always stick to the original source material. But it's pretty strange how the comics didn't try to capitalize on this popular relationship since it was one of the hottest happenings on TV at the time. That being said, Michonne was Rick's best friend in the comics and even looked after Carl once he passed away. So that counts for a lot and positions her as absolutely vital in the storyline. Maybe Robert Kirkman's original plan for Michonne was to not make her arc strictly about love, but something more, something more meaningful. Considering how she became a high court judge of the Commonwealth at the end of the series, it shows how far her character grew from the first time we saw her wielding the katana. Maybe her love was actually for everyone around her. Sophia's Happy Ending It's fair to say that season two of The Walking Dead was the first time the show took out our hearts and stomped on him. After the struggle to find Sophia for a good part of the season, it was heartbreaking to see how the little girl had turned into a walker and had to be finished off in such a brutal fashion. No one expected it, and many thought that there would be some hope for Sophia on the show. Fortunately, in the comics, Sophia's storyline wasn't quite so tragic. In fact, she made it all the way to the last issue, where we find out that she married Carl and has a daughter named Andrea with him. After losing her mom, it was actually Glenn and Maggie who raised her as their daughter, providing her with the love and support she needed. What's even sweeter is to see how the seeds of infatuation between her and Carl blossomed into love in their adult years. See, not everything about the zombie apocalypse has to be bleak all the time. Want to go down the YouTube rabbit hole and find out more about The Walking Dead? We got you. Check out our hilarious bloopers and funny moments videos about the show. And while you're at it, give this video a like and subscribe to the channel for some more awesome videos. Thanks for tuning in.